Good day, Industrial Advisor listeners, and thank you for tuning in. If you have not subscribed, please do so by clicking subscribe wherever you podcast. Click the like button and hit the bell if you want notifications of when we put up new content. Leave us a comment about anything we discuss here today or general comments about the show. Now, let's get into it. Welcome to our Industrial Advisors podcast. I have Bill Condon and, and Matt McGregor. We have a great guest this morning. We have Glenn Thomas, who's the Senior Vice President for Corporate Real Estate Services at Knight Swift Transportation. I think Glenn manages over 400 locations, so very, very busy guy. But yeah, it's great to have you on the show. I got to know Glenn last year. We ran a 5K together at this conference. Well, I don't know if it was a 5K. So I think it turned into like a 10K <laughs> <I'm sure>. plus <laughs> with Bill. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, yeah. you guys. <laughs> but yeah, I was like really impressed with how fast Glenn is. And we ran actually the next day, the next oh, morning. That's true. Yeah, yeah. we went, went on, had a great run. And Glenn's preparing for a half Ironman, right? Yes, I am. How many Ironmans have you completed? So I've done three full Ironmans and a, a lot of half Ironmans. Yeah. 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 And your, la your last Ironman was St. George, right? It was St. George. Okay. Yeah, it was a world championship there. Yeah. yeah. And, and just for the listeners, uh, St. George is known as the absolute most br beautiful, beautiful, but yeah. tough. What's the elevation change on the bike? It may be six or 7,000. I mean, that's insane. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My legs are tired. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So needless to say, Glenn's a stud. Yes. Yeah. No well, doubt no. about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what's the next half iron location? It's in Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's your... Tempe, yeah. but okay. yeah. Backyard. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And th is that October? October. The end Perfect. of October. Okay. Six so it's weeks. Cool cooling down a little bit because it, it's been hot this summer. It's there. been, hey, we just hit, I think yesterday was 54. Four days above 110 for the year. Ooh, wow. Ooh, that's Record. crazy. Yeah. Record setting. Yeah, so. that's <laughs> insane. Yeah, that's something. Yeah. Well, that's great. Tell us a little bit about your company, Night Swift. You know, what what is it exactly that you guys yeah. do? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so Night Swift Transportation, we're a holdings company. So we hold about 10 different brands under the Night Swift umbrella, okay. right? So Night Swift were the two primaries, right, when we kind of merged, but we've bought a lot of companies since Night Swift merged in 2017. And so we we were pr primarily just tr a trucking company, you know, hauling goods for Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, Ikea, Coca-Cola, Coors, you know, it's all the big players. Sure. And then in 20, or a couple of years ago, well, I guess just after 2017, we bought a warehouse company and then we bought LTL, a LTL company a couple of years ago. And so- What was the warehouse company? It's called Hayes. So okay. they're based out of Wichita, Kansas. They're a small kind of a boutique warehouse company. We only got a couple million square feet under, under their umbrella. But then we bought an LTL company out of the Southeast, bought an LTL company out of the Northwest, right? And so we're kind of piecing together an LTL footprint, you know? And so we kind of offer the full scope of kind of transportation logistics services across uh, the U.S. and Mexico. And like like Bill mentioned, it's around 400 locations, a little north of 8, 8 million square feet. Yeah, that's a lot. You guys have that's been in big acquisition portfolio. mode. We have, it's been so busy. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> it's been so busy. So, and it's interesting because my team, I've kind of structured it so that I, it's, and I, I haven't named corporate real estate services for a reason because we provide these services for all of our brands, right? So we're really the only department, if you will, or team within the Knight Swift Holdings umbrella that services all of our companies. There's nobody else that does this. And how big is your team? So there's about 44 of us wow. on the oh, team. Yeah, you need that many for that many locations. You do, yeah. yeah. So, and are you guys also underwriting like acquisitions yeah. on the real estate side? We do the yeah. full, yeah, the full service yeah. suite from acquisition, disposition, leasing to design, construction, management, environmental compliance. Wow. Yeah. So there's lots going on in your space right now. Lots. It's been a crazy year. What are some of the trends you're seeing in the industry, in your space? Yeah. So- from a trends perspective, it's interesting because we used to primarily be truckload, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, that's a trend. There's a trend within truckload. There's a trend within warehousing. There's a trend within LTL, mm -hmm. right? So from, like, a truckload perspective, there is some consolidation kind of happening in our space, but it's primarily in the larger company. Like, 
if you're over 100 trucks, you're a big company. Mm -hmm. We have 20,000. Wow. Right? And so we're, co we're considered a mega carrier, right? Uh -huh. We're the largest in their space in North America. Those um, are all owned. <clears throat> owned. Okay. Yes. Not, and, and, and do you do anything outside of the owned? So we do owner operators as well. Okay. Yeah. Like contract. Yep. Um, but it's very small. Okay. You know, maybe one or two percent. Got it. Yeah. So, so there is some consolidating, but also within our space, within the last, I'd say, 10 years, there's been kind of a evolution or growth in the independent contractor space, mm -hmm. right? And so my belief is that technology has kind of driven that, right? Where back in the day, there wasn't a lot of tech, and so it was kind of harder for an independent contractor to get loads. I see. And now load boards, they're all digital. There's load, load board consolidators that'll get all of these load boards, put them in one. And as a driver, I just pay a fee and I get access to all these loads, right? So we've seen a growth actually quite significantly over the last 10 years where larger companies are not really growing that much, but it's this growing evolution of these companies that are zero to six trucks. That's it. Like these wow. are small trucking firms that have, have grown. So so that's one, one thing that's kind of happening um, on the truckload side. And then as it relates to kind of LTL, I don't know if anybody's seen the news, but yellow, yeah, right? Yeah, big so, news. so big news, right? They have combined, I think it was close to 350, 400 locations, okay. right? Between leased and owned. And it was a big bankruptcy, right? Big yeah. failure. And so- Your top competitor? <clears throat> so yeah, we compete with them on the LTL side yep. for sure, right? And it's been interesting. I mean, so we're really involved, right, with the disposition of their assets, right? Because sure. we're trying to grow our LTL footprint. Sure. But LTL has seen some pretty significant changes over the last 10 to 20 years. But in terms of Ye Yellow was a unionized company, right? I think a lot of people know mm -hmm. that. And there's been, I think, in the 90s, there was of the top 10 or top 25, seven or eight of them were unionized. Now we're down to two. Wow. Right? Yeah. We're I think it's T Force and another one. So, so there's been some, a shift on the LTL side, and there's been some consolidation as well, right? Little there's regional players that are getting eaten up by more national players, right? So, so that's kind of a trend that I'm seeing on the LTL side, and then also a trend that I think is in general to transportation is just how are we lowering our, our emissions, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big thing, right? And there's, you know, there's J.B. Hunt's a, a big player on the rail side of the space. And they're, you know, from an ESG perspective, that's one thing that they are kind of touting, right? Because it's a lower emission, lower carbon footprint to haul per load, right? Mm -hmm. So certainly a focus for us is how do we get lower carbon footprint freight from point A to point B? So we have a, a, a rail division that that's that's growing, but also we're playing in the EV space, right? So I don't know if anybody's seen an electric truck. A yep. big semi truck, right? Sure. There's not a lot on the road today, no. but it is growing. The biggest issue is infrastructure, yeah. right? And so we're putting in a four megawatt charging solution in Southern California for a decent sized fleet there. And it's not easy. <laughs> I bet. So, what does the fleet look like for EV right now? So, it's very small and I feel like it's in beta okay. right now, right? Yeah. So, there's, you know, 10 to 20 truck fleets okay. of the large, of, of like mega carriers yep. who have tens of thousands of trucks, but they'll have like, just a you few. know, just a few yeah. just because it's hard to charge these. I mean, you need, you need megawatt charging yep. and to get that, your service provider needs to provide you megawatts of power to your site, right. which that's the big challenge right now is just getting power. And how far do those trucks go? So typically they're under 200 miles. Yeah. I think oh. they're it's around, all local. Delivery. I think they're all around the 150 mark. Yeah. Right. So in a majority of the freight we haul is long haul, right? It's yep. three, 400, 500 miles. Right. That makes that challenging. Very challenging. Yeah. yeah. So it's just pickup and delivery. That's typically all you can do with these electric trucks is just local milk runs. You know exactly where you're going, how to plan for how much electricity you're going to use. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what do you think the future is, not not only the EV, but autonomous trucks? Because I feel like we it's been really slow. I know <laughs> yeah. starting in, I think, 2016, I believe it was, I think it was Walmart that was running beta tests with the pilot drivers on Highway 10 between yep. Port LA and, and, and Arizona. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I don't think there's been much progress. So where are we at? There where hasn't. Is yeah. yeah, I mean... What I can speak about is our position is, I think, the technology 
for autonomy is great to have a safer driver. So not necessarily having a driverless truck, right? right? But just having a safer driver, right? Mm -hmm. So the cameras, they can see things a lot quicker than a human, than a human can, right? Yeah. And yeah. so like we see similar to the airline industry, you have autopilot on the plane, you hit the button and it auto flies. Right. There's still two pilots, yes. right? We're not gonna fly planes. Just safer. Yes, it's just yes. safer, right? So. That's where we kind of see the future in terms of autonomy and trucking is still a driver. Okay. Maybe he's a little more techie driver, yeah. you know, yeah. so he can troubleshoot things. But we believe there'll always be a driver in the truck. Always? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how far out do you see it where, say, a majority of your fleet is the combination of that autonomous with the driver mm -hmm. and EV? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a really good. I've been thinking about that myself, right? And I think. Once we figure out infrastructure, then I'll be able to answer that question. Okay. It's just infrastructure is so limited. I mean, yeah. think of the petro industry. It's like anybody can go stand up a gas station because they just tank in the, the diesel right. and fill it up, right? That's right. You can't like, just tank yeah, in the power no, and cannot. fill up the gas the <laughs> station right. with power. It's, it's just a different model. So right. to be determined. Okay. Yeah. Very good. What a great question, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You should have just answered it matter of fact, like year 2044, right? <laughs> yeah. After I retire. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, that's great information. So you guys are in a really competitive space. Mm -hmm. How do you look, how do you guys try and separate yourselves? And what do you guys do as a company that separates you from your competition? Yeah. So a couple of different things, right? So in our, so in, and it's, when a truckload is different than LTL and we have different challenges in terms of drivers and, 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 and uh, servicing our customers, right? And so on the truckload side, turnover industry-wide is over 100%, right? So you just, you have constant churn, right? Sure. And so our focus really is how do we retain our drivers, right? Like, and we have a big focus on, and drivers now, hey, drivers make up probably 90% of our workforce, right? We still have a back office and shop technicians, mm -hmm. right? But of the largest segment of our employee base, it's the drivers. And so really a focus is on how do we retain them? And so a big thing is uh, how do we treat them? Right. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? How do we connect yeah. with them? And so a, lo a lot of, th we, we kind of have a distributed model with how we set up our terminal networks so that it's not one location that services thousands of drivers. It's one location that services a hundred, right? And so we have local management. They can connect with the drivers. They can resolve their, you know, concerns. Um, but also we're investing a ton of money into our facilities, right? We want to make sure they have the latest amenities, the, the best showers, lounges, yeah. you know? So the drivers, I mean, they're on, they'll be gone for a couple of weeks, right? you know? And right. so we really want our locations to be kind of a home away from home. They can come and relax. You know, they get the laundry done, they can take a shower, they can just chill. And we have gaming centers, you know, that yeah. we were standing up. We have gyms at almost a, a lot of our locations. And then we just have chill lounge locations. They sit down, watch TV, movies, whatever. Yeah. Right? So we're really putting a lot of focus on just their home away from home. Right? Yeah, that's smart. I mean, labor is such a challenging it is to, you know issue for, for so many companies right now, whether it it's in, in the office world, in the trucking world. Whatever it is, it's and so doing doing those things super important and valuable. It, it is, and especially for a large carrier like us, it's and kind of how I mentioned at the very beginning, we have this growing group of zero to six truck companies, right? Where they like the auto that they love the reason why that's growing is because they love the autonomy. They can pick the load, yeah, whenever they want to haul it, what they want to haul, where they want to haul it, right? So really, we need we're kind of we're kind of challenged with that. Like, hey, we. We want you to come drive for us, mm -hmm. not do your own thing, yeah. right? And so we need to change our game yeah, a little bit. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. What are some of the best practices uh, in the industry in general, right? So I think a lot of these are tr technology driven. I mean, a lot of our uh, safety is a big thing, mm -hmm. right? Safety is a big thing. And so we really have invested. Driver safety? Or yes, in driver yeah. safety. Yeah. yeah. I mean, hey, I think, what was it, last year... Last well, it was 2022. Yeah, last year we drove about 3.8 million miles a day. Wow, <laughs> wow, that's incredible. 3.8 million miles a day, right? Yeah. And so if you think about like just you and I driving on the road, like 
I get distracted on the road, you know, and I got yeah. a 20 minute commute, yeah. you yes, know what I mean? Yes. Like, so, you know, really driver safety. So we are equipping our vehicles with technology, like forward facing cameras that'll help detect crashes or, hey, there's a slowdown, right? So really technology in our trucks is a big thing that we're focusing on mm -hmm. just to help our drivers be a little more safe. And you'll see that industry-wide. A lot of carriers out there, they're putting cameras in trucks to help alert drivers mm -hmm. of issues. But also it's a, it's a it's kind of a training tool as well because we're alerted anytime there's a hard stop a hard turn, you know, whatever the case may be, we can go in and coach our drivers, hey, you know, next time let's do this a little different so that we're a little safer, right? So that's kind of a best practice that's in the industry. And also, you know, we have close to 65,000 trailers. We call it the mobile warehouse. Yeah, sure. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And so really knowing the location of all these, tr these, these tractors and trailers, because we have a lot of tractors as well, and tractor, aka semi, same it's synonymous, right? Yep. Not like a farmer tractor John Deere that we're hauling freight with. But knowing where these where the location is, because not only we want to know where the stuff is at, but also we want to prevent our equipment and people going into kind of precarious or troubled areas, right? So we'll geofence certain parts of the country. Like if a truck goes in, it's if somebody is alerted and we call the driver, hey, I don't know if you knew there's a riot going on in that area. We need to make sure that you stay out of that area. Yeah. Right. So yeah. so we do try to help our drivers stay out of troublesome areas as well. And then also another kind of, of thing that technology driven is just load planning software. Because one thing that's most frustrating for a driver is or professional drivers is to take a load from point A to point B, and then they wait for two or three days for the next load. Yeah, they're right? sitting. Yeah. They're just sitting, right? And so really just helping the software be more efficient with, hey, you're here. You know, you have the regulated, you got to be down for a certain amount of time, right? That's just regulated by the government. But once you're done with waiting, you know, they want to make money. They don't, yes. They're away from their families, you right. know? Right. So, yeah. It yeah. sure seems like you guys do a great job of making it all about taking care of your employees, right? Oh, 100%. 100%. One other thing I didn't mention for the office, and actually, it's, I think it's for anybody. We do have a great college reimbursement. Actually, I think it's paid 100%, you know, through different universities. So really, we want to make sure that not just the dr driver, but everybody, office, you know, shop that we're investing into their future. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's interesting you said that because it backing up a little bit, knowing that Drivers are 90% of your labor force. And you said the turnover is greater than 100%. Mm -hmm. What is happening with them? Because it sounds like you're taking really good care of some of them. So are they, le they're leaving the industry. They're not leaving you necessarily, right? It depends. So like, it, yes and no. It's probably a little bit of both, okay. right? So it, because we're in such a tight driver market where you can get a job anywhere, mm -hmm where, you know, they'll go for an extra five cents a mile, okay. right? And so really it comes down to the people, like, how are we treating them, yep. you know? And I want to say, I mean, last year, I think we were in the maybe 60% turnover, right? I mean, 40% better than industry, but yeah. still we want it to get, like, it'd be great if we were in like the office turnover rate, you know, in the tent, the single digits. Yeah, right. Like, Awesome. And we actually do have that on the LTL segment. So for LTL, turnover is in the single digits, right? And primarily, they're not gone more than a night, right? They go do their run, come back home, and come back and they go home, right? So really, turnover is extremely low on LTL, but it's extremely high on truckload. And that's industry. Yeah. Well, this has been super insightful. Uh, you've been great and appreciate you joining us. I'm yeah. um, really glad we did this. And Good luck in the uh, upcoming Ironman. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. You bet. Thank thanks you. Thanks so much. Yeah. yeah.